Global debt is at a tipping point. That's according to the boss of HSBC Bank, Noel Quinn. You're speaking at a financial summit in Saudi Arabia, known as the uh, Davos in the desert. Of course, Davos, the Swiss uh, get together in the winter. Well, Quinn's alert following last month's warnings from the International Monetary Fund, the IMF and the World Bank, that debt across the world was now becoming unsustainable. Let's get more with our economics and business editor, Liam Halligan, with uh, On The Money. Is he right, Liam, to make that warning? Maxed out. I think it's interesting that the guy that runs the seventh biggest bank in the world is saying things that up until now, you know, journalistic scribblers like me have been saying. There is an awful lot of concern out there, uh, Mark and Pip, that since 2008, and particularly since the COVID lockdown, a lot of governments around the world have been amassing debt at a huge scale. The UK, the US in particular, Debt in China is very, very high. Debt in Italy is very, very high. And does that mean we're approaching some kind of reckoning on financial markets? We're already seeing bond yields, that is the price that governments must pay to borrow. They're rocketing up. They're at a 25-year high in the US. They're almost at a 30-year high here in the UK. Let's have a look at what Noel Quinn actually uh, Noel Quinn actually said, he said, he said to a, um, a sort of ritzy summit, as you say, in, in Saudi Arabia, I'm concerned about a tipping point on fiscal deficits. That is government spending more than they collect in tax revenue. When it comes, it will come fast. And I think there are a number of economies in the world where that could be a tipping point and it will hit hard. Interestingly, he talked about the US where Joe Biden is massing lots and lots of debt. And he talked about the UK as well. Let's have a quick look at UK debt levels. This is government debt. Um, You can see a graph here. We've gone up from, here we go, from the year 2000, it's at 30% of of GDP, 30% of the size of the economy, through the financial crisis 2008. We're now up at almost 100% of GDP with an increase since the COVID-19 pandemic and lockdown there starting in 2020. And then again, Russia and Ukraine. In Italy, debt's gone up from 120% of GDP in 2012 when there was a Eurozone crisis all the way up to 140% of GDP. Now, in China, the numbers are opaque, but we think debt there is about 140% of GDP. And what this means is that financial markets, investors demand more and more and more return to lend money to the government. And that knocks on interest rates for us if we've got personal loans, mortgages, car purchase, you know, higher purchase, whatever it is. That's why bond markets, which sound arcane, are really, really important. You may not be interested in bond markets, Pip, but they're interested in you. And what Mm. happens when we hit that tipping point? What is the tipping point? What happens when the circuit breakers blow? A tipping point, Mark, is when something like we had in 2008. Again, you know, I'm a financial journalist. I've got to be responsible trying to, you know, predict market meltdowns. But I'm just reporting what Mm. Noel Quinn said, who runs HSBC, which, as I said, is the seventh biggest bank in the world. And it wasn't just him. It was, you know, other titans of, of, of Wall Street and the city of London at this conference were piling in as well. And the tipping point means that financial markets, suddenly they demand a lot more for the government to borrow. Governments then have trouble providing public services. Governments then have to put up debt. That slows down growth. And you get into a even higher debt, high interest rate, low growth spiral. Mm. Financial markets see that coming. Shares fall and you get a kind of 2008 style meltdown. And what's happening at the moment, the Israel Hamas war, that could impact on all this as well. You know, I I often feel rather self-conscious, Pip, uh, when I have these discussions with you and Mark. And obviously we're seeing ghastly pictures Mm. out of Gaza, ghastly pictures uh, out of Israel in general, all kinds of loss of life. It seems almost ridiculous to talk about money. But in the end, you know, war has knock on effects on living standards around the world, particularly when it leads to financial markets becoming very turbulent, whether it's through the oil price, of course, the oil price is knocking up now above $90 a barrel, whether it's through government spending money uh, on war, uh, or whether it's just basic, you know, diplomatic meltdowns and turbulence, which spook investors around the world. There seems to me, 
you know, we were meant to be in the middle of a sort of post-COVID bounce back at the moment, weren't we? We were meant to be in the sunlit uplands. <laughs> but it does, it does seem <laughs> to me... Of ways, I remember well, yeah. It, it, it does, and, you know, and towards the end of this year, interest rates were going to come down, wow. inflation was going to come down. It does seem to me there's a sort of confluence of bad news, storm clouds on the horizon. But, you know, fingers crossed, we live in hope.